What evolution has done to some animals? I mean, the amount of weirdness in some creatures due to adaptability may need an explanation from the animals themselves. Here are some creatures with alien adaptations. Not exactly in order, but it just keeps getting cringier. Some snakes go hunting for their prey. Others sit and wait for their prey to come to them. The spider-tailed horned viper is a species of viper, a venomous snake endemic to western Iran and over the border region with Iraq. With just a few wiggles and waggles, the venomous viper can make its tail look like a crawling arachnid. Really, the resemblance is uncanny, even to a forewarned human observer. The effect is all the more powerful considering just how well the rest of the snake blends into its rocky habitat. Frozen in plain sight, the puppeteer is all but invisible to unsuspecting avians looking for a snack. Like the green tree python, the spider-tailed horned viper is an ambush predator. The snake preys on unsuspecting birds and does it in the sneakiest way possible. It's not actually a mutated spider on this viper's tail. It's an evolutionary adaptation that acts as a fleshy lure to attract prey. The snake mimics the movements of a spider, wiggling its tail about and moving the legs. When a bird comes close to peck at the spider, the viper springs out and catches its meal. That said, it does not work on local birds who have caught on to the viper's way. Instead, the horned viper will lure a migrating bird, particularly insectivorous birds. Instead of finding food, the bird ends up as the viper's snack. But what could be even weirder? Imagine an animal with the face of possum, tooth of mouse, ear of bat, and squirrel-like tail, which led scientists to first assume that it was a rodent. But these animals are actually primates, the same group of species that humans belong to. Oh, and did we mention that middle finger? Let's take a closer look. This is the most superstitious animal on the island of Madagascar called the Eye Eye. Local lore is cast it as a demon, a creature that can kill just by pointing the middle finger, and must be killed on sight. This has led to the death of so many that they are now protected by law. However, the truth is more natural than supernatural. The Eye Eye's third finger is thin and elongated and able to move independently from the other digits. It is the world's largest nocturnal primate, characterized by its unusual method of finding food. Eye eyes find prey within cavities in wood by continuously and rapidly tapping on trees with its middle finger and listening for the sounds of prey beneath. They can tap at a rate of up to eight times per second. Their large ears pick up the sounds of the insects themselves and can distinguish between empty cavities and those full of delicious grubs based on the way their taps reverberate. Once they find a meal, they use their sharp incisors to rip away the bark, gnaw a hole in the wood, and use those same middle fingers to probe and hook out the goodies into the eye eye's mouth, filling the ecological niche of a woodpecker. A fun fact is that there used to be giant eye eyes. An extinct form of the eye eye once lived in southwest Madagascar. It likely weighed between three and five times what the existing eye eye species weighs, making it over 25 pounds. It probably coexisted with early humans, but it is not clear if human activity contributed to its extinction or not. But still, what could be even weirder? This is the only bird and creature, outside of humans, that utilizes fire as a hunting tool. This behavior has been particularly noted in parts of Australia, where the indigenous knowledge of these firehawks is profound, dating back thousands of years. The Aboriginal peoples have long observed and incorporated this natural occurrence into their understanding of the land. Black kites will gather around a fire, grab sticks already burning from a wildfire, carry them, and airdrop them to a different area so that it burns as well. Apparently, these birds have been doing this for centuries. In 1963, there were reports of them stealing burning branches from indigenous cooking fires and dropping them on grass almost a mile away in Australia. Their reputation was so notorious that farmers used to mark the months when they had to fear their livestock getting barbecued. In the savanna country of Northern Australia, the vegetation is well adapted to the area's recurrent fires. These firehawks do this because as flames sweep across the savanna, animals like lizards, grasshoppers, and small rodents panic as their homes turn to ashes. It's like some real supervillain stuff. As the fire spreads, they sit at the highest point they can find and watch, as all the animals are smoked out of their habitat, making them easy prey for the raptors. This fiery strategy is a remarkable display of intelligence and adaptability. The black kite's ability to manipulate its environment to access food underscores the complexity of avian behavior.
When it comes to pound for pound boxing, there is but only one undisputed goat. Imagine a creature that is typically only two to seven inches long, but in a matter of milliseconds, it can deliver a devastating uppercut that pulverizes prey. It can punch so fast such that the forces are as strong as a 22 caliber bullet, which generates temperatures of 4,400 degrees Celsius, nearly as hot as the sun in the surrounding water. That's 2,500 times the force of its own weight. If a human could do that, they'd be able to punch through steel. Contrary to their name, mantis shrimp are neither shrimp nor mantises. The mantis part of their common name is an ode to their adapted forelimbs, which resemble terrestrial praying mantises. Mantis shrimp are classified as either the smashers or the spearers. Spearing mantis shrimp hunt by impaling their prey, mostly fish, on spear-like forelimbs while smashing mantis shrimp kill their prey with a powerful blow from a club-like appendage at the end of their forelimbs. The clubs at the end of a smashing mantis shrimp's forelimbs are formidable weapons. Boasting the fastest strike in the animal kingdom, the victim stands very little chance. Not only are they struck by the club itself, but the speed of the movement creates cavitation bubbles. This is a superheated bubble and small flash of light which for split seconds also generates temperates of 4,400 degrees Celsius, which is nearly as hot as the sun in the surrounding water. When the bubbles collapses, they cause an intense shock wave, which is like a double punch and can stun, dismember, or kill prey instantly. Even if the mantis shrimp misses the target, they have been known to punch their way through aquarium glass, giving rise to an alternative name, the thumb splitter due to the painful gashes they can cause if handled without care by humans. The speed with which they can punch creates forces of up to 1500 Newton, or as strong as a 22 caliber bullet, which has been known to smash thick, tempered aquarium glass. Scientists have remained baffled by mantis shrimp's remarkable ability to evade injury while being able to punch so hard. The speed of a mantis shrimp's strike movement should cause shock waves through its body, However, they are also armed with layers of elastic polysaccharide chitin, which absorbs much of the energy. The effectiveness of this layer has led to scientists to research its properties and design new and improved body armor. Mantis shrimp also have the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom. They afford the mantis shrimp unparalleled vision. Eyes of mantis shrimp are located on the long stalks that can move independently. Each eye has trinocular vision, which means it can gauge depth and distance on its own by focusing on objects with three separate regions, functioning more like a satellite. It's believed mantis shrimp can take all visual information into their brains immediately without having to process it, allowing them to react instantly to the environment. While we humans have only three types of photoreceptors in our eyes, the mighty mantis shrimp have between 12 and 16 different types of photoreceptor cells. This allows them to see ultraviolet, visible, and polarized light. Researchers believe that the compound eyes of mantis shrimp can detect cancer lesions and the activity of neurons because they have the ability to detect polarized light that reflects differently from cancerous and healthy tissue before they appear as visible tumors. This next animal should have easily carried the crown of evolution weirdness, but unfortunately it didn't. So, seeing a hairy frogfish is as if you'd suddenly see a zebra covered in very long hairs, with a fishing rod growing out of its head, and a mouth so big you could fit an antelope in it. Let me just share this mental image to show you how very weird a hairy frogfish really is. On top of it, that nightmarish zebra would also be able to change color, not just to a kind of gray or brown, but nearly every color in the rainbow. The goal again is to blend in along the seafloor without attracting undue diver attention, besides maybe a prey. Despite having a hairy appearance, the hairs are actually skin appendages or spinules which cover the frogfish's body, head, and fins. Hairy frogfish are formidable predators. When the frogfish spots its prey, it will follow the prey by eye movement only. When the prey draws close enough, the frogfish will start moving its lure to bring the prey even closer. As soon as the prey is within one body length of the frogfish, it will strike with lightning speed. The frogfish's rod is technically a modified first dorsal spine, which is movable. The lure looks like a fleshy worm and specific only to the hairy frogfish and can also regenerate if lost. Hairy frogfish use a gulper feeding strategy. They open their large mouths and create a vacuum that pulls in nearby prey hole, no chewing required by this critter. 
It has an extremely flexible stomach, such that it can swallow prey which is up to twice its own size. They are extremely good at hiding in plain sight and are able to change their color to match their surroundings, especially seaweed. Evolution might have been a weird blessing to the other animals, but I don't think it's quite a blessing to the hyenas. It sucks to be a hyena, especially a spotted hyena. It sucks to be a male hyena. It sucks to be a female hyena. It just sucks to be a hyena. I once saw a video that male hyenas tend to have it bad, but it's actually even worse to be a female hyena. Male hyenas are smaller, weaker, and socially below even the lowest newborn female, although exceptions have existed. You eat last, you get bullied, and you're smaller. So check out this vlog of what it takes to be a bouncing male hyena. 1. They have to leave their clan when they become adults. Females don't like mating with males from the same clan. Unlike most animals, where the males may fight it out and the winner gets the girl, in spotted hyena clans the females just dictate the who, where, and when of copulation. So, when they reach sexual maturity, which they do at about two years old, they get kicked out and they have to find another clan, too. Clans aren't accepting anything about new males. The point about kicking out the males when they become adults isn't unique to hyenas. Other animals, like baboons, do this too. However, when male baboons find a new clan, it's an opportunity for them to challenge high-ranking members of that clan. By contrast, new male hyenas must endure aggressive hazing from more established members of the clan, and even when they do gain acceptance, they'll be at the very bottom of the social order. 3. Hyena clans are dominated by females. Even when a male hyena is no longer the newest in his clan, after younger ones have joined below him and older ones ahead of him have died, he'll never outrank the females. Female hyenas are bigger and stronger than their male counterparts, probably to help them provide for their offspring during feeding. For example, a frenzied scrum of hyenas can turn a 550-pound adult zebra into a bloody stain on the grass in under 30 minutes. In a single feeding, an adult can gobble up to one-third of its body weight, or between 33 and 44 pounds of meat. It's a frantic, frenzied, and at times, frightening scene. A female that is bigger and meaner has a better shot of ensuring her surviving cubs get a place at the table and don't get hurt in the process. Four. They have lower life expectancy. Female hyenas can expect to live for eight years, but male ones often live for only half as long. This is partly because of the hazing and partly because they get lower quality food and prematurely worn down teeth due to having too many bones and not enough meat. Their only hope is to leave behind a few cubs, but even that comes with challenges for the male offspring. For the female spotted hyena, her remarkable sexual anatomy remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in biology. The female spotted hyenas has a wildly unconventional genitalia, which are a near-perfect copy and paste of the males. A female spotted hyena will be spotted with a clitoris that extends almost an impressive eight inches and is shaped and positioned exactly like a penis, hence known in polite biological circles as a pseudo-penis. Yeah, and they can even get erections too. To complete this trans trickery, the female spotted hyena also appears to sport her very own pair of testicles. Her labia have fused to form a false scrotum and are filled with fatty tissue swellings, which are quite understandably mistaken for male reproductive organs. What's more, the female spotted hyena is the only known mammal with absolutely no external vaginal opening. Instead, she must urinate, copulate, and give birth through her multitasking pseudo-penis. This last eye-watering feat is like squeezing a watermelon out of a hose pipe, and 10% of first-time hyena mothers actually die in the process. The fate of their cubs is even more precarious, since the umbilical cord is too short to navigate a birth canal that's not only twice the length of a similar-sized mammal's, but includes a cheeky hairpin turn halfway down. Up to 60% of cubs suffocate on their way out. However, Females as cubs that make it have a far greater likelihood of being killed by their siblings. If you're born with a sibling, as most are, you may be eaten. Hyenas are one of the only practicing fratricide species, meaning they kill their siblings. Mothers rarely intervene, and because cubs emerge with eyes open, muscles coordinated, and teeth already pierced through their gums and eager to get their first bite, this could happen any time. Male lions are also a huge problem for hyenas. They avidly hate each other with males seeking out dens to dig out and kill innocent cubs. 
When they can't do this, they'll try their best to grab one or more and kill them. This is why most hyena will scatter, giving males a wide berth if they see them in time. 